Good morning. Coming up, the latest on the new tropical threat targeting the south set to make landfall in Texas as cleanup gets underway following tropical storm Hillary. Our team is tracking the very latest. Also this morning, mortgage rates hit the highest mark since 2000, what it means for your bills and the housing market. Plus, the new study on babies and screen time. Dr. Ashton is live with what parents should know. It's all coming up right here on GMA. We are just days away from this year's KSAT Pigskin Classic. Tickets are on sale right now. Just scan the QR code on your screen to see all your ticket options. It kicks off Friday, followed by the triple header coming up on Saturday over at the Alamo Dome. And we hope to see you there. Well, top stories this morning, a scary situation for a bus driver and students on board this school bus after it got stuck in a collapsed trench on the northeast side. Up next, the repairs made so far to that roadway. And up next, summer is technically wrapping up. However, wildfire danger is sticking around. How fire crews out in Medina County are handling challenges as they try to stop a brush fire from growing. And transguide a fairly uneventful morning, but we are expecting rain in the area and streets could be slick by the evening commute. We'll be back. Right now in GMSA, communities on part of the Texas coast getting ready for Tropical Storm Herald. Mike's here to tell us what's coming our way, and we'll see if any rain will be in the Alamo City Plus. It was a pretty scary event. I was not expecting that. It came in right here, so the spear handle was probably sticking about out about that much. <laughs> I think your microphone is down mm, yes. your address. Outside with live cam right now, waiting on the rain, and Mike says it's not gonna be a rain out, but it definitely could be a factor later today. Live from Case at 12, good morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you, rise and shine at 6 a.m. on your Tuesday, August 22nd. Thanks for starting your morning with us. We hope you had a good Monday, got warm yesterday, but now we can expect a little bit of a break. That's right. Tropical Storm Herald is knocking on the door at the Texas coast and Mike's been tracking it all morning so far. Yeah, the center of it is still off in the Gulf of Mexico, but obviously we still have, we've got rain that has moved on shore already. Now, as far as our picture here in town for the morning commute, nothing out there. Morning commute does stay dry today afternoon it's going to be a little bit of a different situation and there you can see the center of circulation like i said is still out in the gulf of mexico we've got some of the uh, rain bands that already moved well inland from corpus christi in toward kingsville fell furious and down around mccallan some of those showers some thunderstorms up around rockport as well so beeville some of those are going to start to work their way in your direction as well 45 mile per hour winds at the latest update it is moving to the west northwest which is going to keep the path of that storm just to the uh, south of San Antonio down in our southern counties. And obviously that's where the heaviest rain is going to be as it continues to work its way across the area. And it's still going to be at tropical storm strength as it moves across throughout the course of the afternoon into this evening and then over there into northern Mexico by tomorrow. And then it will weaken now. We are going to have a windy day today. As a matter of fact, wind advisories are posted for later on today in our south and southwestern counties. And then we do still have the red flag warning. Now, problem with this storm, it's going to be great to see these some of this rain, obviously the heaviest rain down to the south. And it's going to be great to have temperatures that are going to be below normal. However, with the windy conditions and parts of the hill country, not getting any rain from this that kind of makes the red flag warning the fire danger even that much higher later on today so really good news further down to the south not so great news up to the north 86 is what it feels like here in town right now 87 at canyon lake so we've got a fair amount of humidity around here this morning mold is on the low side and throughout the rest of today the next 12 hours i'm going to make it well up through the 80s uh, and then 90 by noon couple of these showers, thunderstorms, taking into account those down to the, the south, and then we'll start to see them kind of spread out a little bit more late morning, maybe one or two of them here in town, and then throughout the afternoon hours. We only make it up to 94 today, 11 degrees lower than yesterday, two below the normal high temperature. Uh, best opportunity for rain is going to be late morning into early afternoon, then starts to taper off just a little bit. The other thing we have to watch out for, there is a very small chance for minor tornadoes to spin up on the outer bands of these. It's kind of typical as uh, or not that uncommon, I should say, as tropical systems move on shore. Not a great chance of it, but just something else to uh, keep in mind. 
after today, what happens? We'll take a look ahead and go in toward the weekend as well. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, still got some problems out there? Well, it's pretty quiet right now. And uh, Mike, I actually just received an email from a viewer just wanting to know what the traffic updates were down south of us. Uh, we don't have access to a lot of those updates, but I can tell you our TxDOT cameras are showing that the roads are wet down there. But back here in town, thankfully, we are seeing a dry commute for anyone that has to hit the roads in the next few minutes or so. 410 at McCullough, you can see east and westbound lanes are picking up just a bit and they're at 281 at the airport. There shouldn't be any delays if you are heading out there this morning. But taking you to our map, we did have some stall vehicles that were reported a little bit earlier this morning. Those have since cleared out and you can see behind me we have a quiet commute as we get the Tuesday morning commute rolling here. But just take your time if you're heading into San Antonio because things are still green from Seguin along I-10 westbound with 27 minutes to the Alamo City, 33 minutes if you're traveling along 87 northbound from Lavernia and for our friends in Floresville. It should be about 29 minutes if you're hitting the roads and heading to the Alamo City this early in the morning. But one last look around town. Yeah, dry commute here at 10 at medical. We can expect that for the most part and we will continue to keep a close eye on the roadways. I'll have another update a little bit later on in the newscast. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. Back to our top story this morning. We've been following a scary situation for a bus driver and a few students on board a Judson ISD school bus. As it was dropping off students Monday, it fell through the street just under an hour ago. Road crews finished making repairs and refilled the holes with dirt and gravel. The incident with the bus happened yesterday in a northeast side cul-de-sac. The Judson ISD bus was eventually pulled out by a couple of wreckers. The district says two students were on board at the time, but they're OK. Those who live in the area say this was a moment that should never happen. A leak from the water, whatever pipes are in the road, and uh, it's, it's usually not bad, but now it's gotten worse and SAWS has ignored it. This call was made, you know, two, three days ago, and uh, it just got progressively worse, and we did not miss out on calling each and every day. We asked San Antonio Water System about the reported leak. A SAW spokeswoman says a water main break caused a trench to collapse. It was scheduled for repair Sunday night. However, SAW says crews were busy with higher priority calls. SAW said it has first 52 crews working 24-7 on water leaks and main breaks. It had 729 of those last month, and August is expected to peak at 940 breaks and leaks. New details this morning on a bizarre close call. A woman says someone threw a spear through her windshield while she was driving. Siobhan Canales says she was on her way to a friend's house around 9 on Sunday night. She was driving near FM 1516 and I-10 just outside Converse when a five-foot long spear came crashing into her car. Canales says all of a sudden her window exploded. She has no idea where that spear came from. It was not, you know, road rage or anything. This was unprovoked uh, and just completely random. I'm just thankful to be alive because, I mean, I have, I have kids. Now, the San Antonio Police Department collected the spear for evidence, and so far, no arrests have been made. And Alice says she had to make about $400 worth of repairs to her car. In your morning headlines, the Food and Drug Administration has approved a new vaccine to protect newborns against RSV. Pfizer's vaccine is actually given to mothers while they're still pregnant. From there, it provides protection to babies that carries with them when they are born. The shot is 82% effective at preventing severe RSV in newborns, but that protection wanes quickly and is only meant to last six months. As we continue our scorching hot summer, we're not alone in Texas. Over 800 daily heat records have been broken across the U.S. in the last 30 days. That's according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. They expect at least 445 more daily heat records to be broken this week. Most could occur across the central and eastern U.S. as an extremely dangerous heat wave with near triple digit temperatures continuing to build. Now to the record rainfall causing big problems in parts of the U.S. Southwest. Floods and mudslides trap people in homes and cars in Southern California. As ABC's Andrew Dimmert reports, flooding in some areas could last for days. This morning, people across Southern California and Nevada drying out and digging out after a rare tropical storm dumped record amounts of rain, creating this muddy mess. Small creeks transformed into raging rivers, carrying tree trunks and boulders, some areas getting more than a foot of rain. In nearby Oak Glen, the only bridge out of town is now buried in feet of mud. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of work to get out here to get the bridge down again. They'll probably have to bring a backhoe in or something.
Some 700 people rescued in the mountain town of Seven Oaks, mud washing into the fire station, and near Palm Springs, which saw its wettest August day on record, a giant front loader had to be called in to rescue at least a dozen people at an assisted living facility stranded by mud. Nearly all the low-lying areas in this desert valley are filled with water and mud, including the interstate. This is the 10, which has been shut down or crawling since the heaviest rains came in yesterday. In the desert town of Cathedral City, at least 46 rescues reported. Crews responded to 1,800 emergencies in the region. The flooding threat in some areas could last for days as rainwater washes down mountainsides. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Here in Texas, cities across the valley are setting up sandbag stations ahead of Tropical Storm Herald today. KRGV reports crews in Mission spent most of the day Monday piling up sand so people could fill their bags provided by the city. Meanwhile, the city of Port Aransas has declared a local state disaster. The Texas Department of Transportation says it's prepared and working to clear drainage systems. Officials say that Port Aransas could see flooding and severe damage, specifically on coastal beaches. All city beaches there will be closed until tomorrow. Over in Medina County, fire crews say extremely dry vegetation, high wind and rough terrain played a part in helping brush fires spread and reignite. These are images shared by emergency crews on the front lines. The Stead Fire near County Road 265 and State Highway 2676 has been burning off and on for over a week. It's about 400 acres and is mostly contained this morning. Crews from the entire county and state have been called in to help. Keep in mind, crews are fighting the growing fire in triple digit temperatures. Everything we can do right now to prevent these fires is vitally important. Just look across the state, look at our burn map. No homes have been lost, but fire crews say there are still risks. Their only hope is that rain arrives hopefully today. Time now, 610 and 83 degrees for now. So to come on GMSA after a big move, a new house doesn't always feel like a new home right away. How you can make things more comfy for you and your family before 630. And after the break, National Guard members from four other states are coming to the southern border to help Texas with Operation Lone Star. What Governor Greg Abbott is saying about the joint effort next. And outside with live cam, a couple of reminders from both Stephen and Mike. We're expecting showers and storms in parts of our area today. That could cause problems on the roads. And don't forget about gustier winds. All the details, they'll cover all those bases coming up. Just about 6.15, welcome back to GMSA. Governor Greg Abbott was joined at the border in Eagle Pass Monday by four Republican governors who have sent their own law enforcement or National Guard members to our border. In May, Abbott sent letters to governors across the U.S. requesting support for Texas's border security mission following President Biden's decision to end Title 42. Iowa, Nebraska, Oklahoma, and South Dakota responded to support Texas. We're not going to stand idly by and see this disaster wrecked upon the United States. And that's why they have come here and why they are sending their personnel here, because they know that we as states share an obligation. The governor also acknowledged during the news conference that that floating barrier on the U.S.-Mexico border was moved closer to American soil. The Biden administration in Mexico have protested the wrecking ball sized buoys that Abbott authorized in the name of preventing migrants from entering the country. And looking ahead, the city of San Antonio and several local churches and organizations will receive federal funding to help with migrants. The San Antonio Food Bank and the city received the biggest grants locally from the Department of Homeland Security. Its shelter and services program distributed more than $77 million to 53 recipients from 13 states and Washington, D.C. That includes $5.4 million in San Antonio. The money will help cover costs for migrants going through immigration proceedings. Time check 616. Let's check back with Stephen Gavazos to see how our roads are looking. Not a bad morning over here. And the good news is our roads are expected to be dry, but uh, we're going to keep a close eye on things throughout our region. You can see 281 at San Pedro traffic's moving for a lot of folks out there, but getting busier minute by minute. Guys, you know this, it's going to get busy as we get closer to morning rush, but thankfully I'm not seeing any reason to rush out the door right now. You should pretty much have the roads to yourself for the most part, but we did have a few stall vehicles out there, so if you encounter one, make sure to move over or slow down. That is the law. Taking a look, you have a lot of construction to look ahead to this week, and quick reminder here, 
here. I mentioned this yesterday. I 10 over on the northwest side of San Antonio. We do have repair work that's taking place. This did start yesterday and it's going to take us all the way to the end of the work week. That's Friday, August 25th. Don't forget nine in the morning to eight in the evening. This is a full day's work out there for crews, so just be on the lookout. We will see a single lane closure on the southbound frontage road of Lock and Terra Parkway, but you can scan this QR code. Everything you need to know before you go, all that text you saw on the screen, you could have it at your fingertips. That takes you to our traffic page. We have a full list of all the closures that are taking place in our area. Know what to expect before you have to hit the roads, but we know crews out there are uh, still going to have to battle that heat. Yeah, especially going into the latter portion of the week. Today, everybody gets a break from yeah. the heat. Now, as far as the fire danger, that still exists and may actually get kind of exaggerated a little bit up to the north because you're not going to get any rain, but still windier conditions. It's a double-edged sword today, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. Unfortunately, um, a lot of folks down to the south, you're going to be getting maybe actually too much rain. And then here in town, it's not going to be, we'll take, you know, anything we can get. But yeah, as far as the, the path of this is going to be staying well down to the south. And as you can see, we do have uh, some of the uh, showers and thunderstorms that are working their way into Rockport right now, obviously past Corpus Christi. This is the leading edge, obviously fell furious and then continuing down a little bit further up to the north uh, Port Lavaca. Some of this rain hasn't moved into Beeville as of yet, but this will continue all to work its way to the basically to the west, a little bit actually west northwestwardly, so not quite up to the uh, the northwest and the center of circulation obviously is still back out here in the Gulf of Mexico and that will make landfall later on late morning or early afternoon today. So we will uh, see the showers and thunderstorms mainly down to the south. That's the best thing, you know, and anything with the forecast is mainly to the south is the qualifier with it. We've got the clouds, obviously, that have now started to work their way on in here. And here's another view on the satellite and radar loop with that moving in. Here's the uh, computer model going through this morning taking into account and so I've got the chance of rain in the forecast this morning four places down to the south and down to the uh, the southeast perhaps a couple little you know straggly showers moving out ahead of that but again the majority of rain is going to be down to the south and it looks like the 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 peak of the rain is going to be mid late morning and then early afternoon and then it's going to continue to work its way out by later afternoon there out to the west and even a couple of heavier downpours can be expected as well and this will like I said pretty much be on out of here once we get past dinner time and going into the evening hours now who sees the rain well obviously the most rain is going to be down there down to the south and then here in town and out in portions of the uh, hill country it's going to be basically Again, we'll take anything we can get, but this is not going to be any sort of a drought breaker. A quarter an inch of rain here in town out in parts of the hill country, but then further up to the north where virtually nothing, still windy conditions. That's why that fire danger is much higher up to the north. Also, there is a severe threat with this, and that is in the form of potentially small tornadoes. A lot of times when a tropical system comes on shore and it's still spinning and as that wind, the outer bands are kind of getting dragged across the ground, uh, little spin ups can happen on those outer bands and that's why there is that very small possibility for an isolated tornado or two. Not very likely at all. They're hardly strong at all, but just something to be on the lookout for. Of course, the uh, Clouds, the rain are going to keep temperatures down in the mid 90s and it's going to be beautiful to see some of this rain and have those lower temperatures back to the triple digits back to 104s by the weekend, but still a shower or two, even a thunderstorm by the weekend. So at least that chance will exist. So it's a 60% chance of precipitation, not a 60% chance of a tornado. No, no, Cor no. Correct. <laughs> okay. Yes. Correct. Yeah. The two different <laughs> lines on there. So just one or two of those possible tornadoes. Very low chance at that. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Great day to get the Weather Authority app. Right now, 621. We'll be right back. With wet AMD, sometimes I worry my world is getting smaller because of my sight. But now, I can open up my world with Fabismo. Fabismo is the first FDA-approved treatment for people with wet AMD that improves vision and delivers a chance for up to four months between treatments, which means doing more of what I love. Fabismo 
is the only treatment designed to block two causes of wet AMD. The Bismo is an eye injection. Don't take it if you have an infection or active swelling in or around your eye or are allergic to it or any of its ingredients. Treatments like the Bismo can cause eye infection or retinal detachment. The Bismo may cause a temporary increase in eye pressure after receiving the injection. Although in common, there is a potential risk of heart attack or stroke associated with blood clots. Open up your world. A chance for up to four months between treatments with the Bismo. Ask your doctor. And welcome back at 624. For years, experts have said the time between Memorial Day and Labor Day is the busiest for moving. But after moving, it can take the rest of the year to settle in. Experts believe that's because a new house doesn't always feel like a new home right away. So what do you do about it? Well, they say the first thing is unpack as quickly as possible. You have everything in its place then. Digging through boxes will constantly remind you of the fact that you're not at home. Home experts also say you should wait to decorate. Start with putting up pictures, artwork, knickknacks, and houseplants. Even a beautiful house isn't going to quite feel like home until you've added your own personal touch. You might consider painting a bedroom to your favorite color. Also, adding curtains or rugs can make the house feel like you. And don't forget the little things when making your house a home. Consider lighting a favorite candle or making a favorite dinner. Also, invite family over to create some new memories. And as we head to break, we're going to tell you about something on KSET.com. So next Sunday is National Cinema Day. This Sunday. This Sunday. Right? Okay. We thought it was today. All right. Yeah, well, it's this, this Sunday. This Sunday. Mm -hmm. And Evo Entertainment is offering a big screen deal to celebrate. So unlimited popcorn and sodas will cost just $4. All Evo cinemas and tickets for the deals are on right now. So you can find all the details on the story on KSET.com. Yep, August 27th, right there on the graphic. Very good. 625, 82 degrees. And let's look out there with Trans Sky, looking over at Highway 281 at San Pedro, where things are moving right now. Uh, they've been pretty good so far, but we're going to be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos very soon. My kid was on that bus. He's probably terrified from having fallen in that hole on that bus. It was listing at about a 22 degree angle when I first saw it. So like every parent, you worry about the safety of your kids all the time. This morning on GMSA, a scary situation for a bus driver and students on board this school bus after it got stuck in a collapsed trench on the northeast side. What crews have done about that trouble spot in just the last hour. Outside with live cam waiting on the potential for some showers and storms as Tropical Storm Harold is on the lower Texas coast as we speak. Good morning, everybody. It's 630 on your Tuesday, August 22nd. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us and happy break in the temperatures or rain. We can say we hadn't seen that in a long time. Oh, yeah. Mike says the clouds are going to help if anything yeah. else. And Mike, are there any showers in the San Antonio area right now? Uh, in our viewing area, maybe on the, the extreme fringes, okay. well down to the, the southeast. But uh, here in town, this picture I keep pointing out is not going to be changing this morning as far as the commute and wet roads. We've got dry wet roads right now, and that's the way it's going to be staying throughout the rest of the morning commute and uh, temperatures. It is warm it is humid as you would expect. So I mean, other than having that storm way down in the south, nothing is different this morning, but it will be changing throughout the day. 83 is the temperature 2.69, which means there's a fair amount of humidity out there. Wind out of the northeast at six miles per hour. Here is the uh, the rain and like I said, well down to the southeast, just about to move into Victoria, maybe into a uh, B County. So this is kind of on the fringes of our actual viewing area, but we'll start to see See these showers continue to work their way a little bit to the west northwestwardly. That's the direction that the storm is moving right now. 45 mile per hour winds. It reached 39 mile per hour winds, which made it a tropical storm, reached tropical storm strength. And like I said, continues to work its way basically to the west, a little bit of a northwesterly flavor at 18 miles per hour. And uh, the, it's going to make landfall later on today then work its way across the southern portion of the state. Still is tropical storm strength and then continue to weaken as it reaches the uh, the mountains of northern Mexico there. Now, as far as wind, there is a wind advisory in our south and western counties later on this afternoon. This is going to be one of the problems. We also have red flag warnings. Now, it's not covering the entire area like it has been the past couple of days just up to the north. But the problem being with the windy conditions, obviously windier closer to that storm, but still fairly breezy. You're not going to be getting any rain up there to the north and with the windy conditions that's going to 
Well, actually kind of make the fire danger a little bit higher up to the north later on today. Again, temperatures around the area when you factor in the humidity, 87 is what it feels like there in Canyon Lake, 88 at Stinson as well as Port S.A. Mold is on the low side. The updated count comes out in about an hour or so and throughout the rest of the morning. A couple of these showers down to the southeast. Then later on this morning, early afternoon, especially is kind of the, the peak of the rain. Showers, thunderstorms. Primarily to the south, there will be some here in town and later on this afternoon, mid 90s for high temperature. That's it. So actually 11 degrees below where we were yesterday two below normal. A tornado is possible, not very likely just as tropical systems come on shore and that a big storm is still spinning. It can kind of uh, spin up a little uh, little tornadoes on the outer band. So that'll just be something that we have to, to keep an eye out for rest of the week. It is back to triple digits. However, Still a stray shower or thunderstorm is going to be possible as we go in toward the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's the latest, sir? Check out that monitor over there, Mike. We do not have a uh, good situation here at 35 at Weedner. Let's go ahead and take that shot in if we can, because we have multiple first responders out along I-35 northbound. This is near Weedner Road, and I just talked to our friends at Transguide. We can confirm at least two left lanes are blocked, but any situation that happens along I-35 will lead to major delays for anyone whether you're traveling north or south, but we're seeing traffic pick up throughout that corridor and it's not really even morning rush yet. So be on the lookout here again, a massive scene out there. We hope everybody is doing OK. We're getting ready to send a push alert out, so just make sure you have that case at mobile app downloaded with those notifications turned on. And if you do, you may have already received that push alert to your phone. Let's get a look at our map here where we can see traffic is just moving right now at just 12 miles per hour. If you are heading along I 35 northbound again, two left lanes are blocked and it's still very dark out there. Tough to say if first responders are out there on the scene are part of me paramedics, but we hope everyone is doing OK. Traffic's just not looking good. Backed up to Loop 410 at that interchange there. Giving you a wide look at the map, we can expect more delays as the morning commute does get moving. Few stall vehicles are out there as well, so please be on the lookout for that. But we have to keep a close eye on here. Again, we did send out that push notification to your case at mobile app. We'll take one last look here at 35 at Weedner, where we do have a massive crash that was reported earlier. We'll have another update coming up a little later on. Guys. Stephen, thank you. Now to late breaking news. San Antonio police have a search area on the north side of town looking for the man who robbed a fast food restaurant. This is happening in the area near West Avenue, not far from Bassey Road. Katrina Weber is there live for us this morning, and it sounds like some of those employees are pretty shaken up, Katrina. Yeah, that's according to what the sergeant tells us. He says one woman was held at gunpoint while other employees scrambled to hide from the gunman who forced his way inside this restaurant. Now, this happened just within the last hour. Police still here talking to the employees. This is the 2700 block of West Avenue, by the way. Police say that two employees had gone out to that garbage dumpster to take out the trash, and one of them had to go back inside for some reason. But that's when this gunman, who was in a car, circled the parking lot, drove up to a woman who was still outside, held her at gunpoint, and then forced his way inside the restaurant. They say that once he got inside, he did take money from the safe and the registers. And again, a lot of the employees were frightened. They ran and hid from him. He then took off in a car uh, described only as a silver car. Police say that that gunman was wearing a ski mask and a hoodie, so they don't have a very good description. But apparently they did have enough information on the car to have their helicopter go up and search for that vehicle. But they did not track down the gunman who robbed this business this morning. But police, again, trying to get whatever information they can. We assume they may have some cameras in here that uh, officers will be able to look at and get a little better picture of exactly what went on here this morning. But again, employees shaken up after their encounter with a gunman who forced his way inside. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. To another top story we've been following this morning, a scary situation for a bus driver and a few students on board this school bus you're about to see. As it was dropping students off Monday, it fell through part of the street. Just under an hour ago, crews finished making repairs, refilled the uh, gravel there, or the pavement. The incident with the bus happened yesterday in a northeast side cul-de-sac. The Judson ISD bus was eventually pulled out by a couple of wreckers. The district says two students were on board, but they're okay. Those who live in the area say this was a moment that should never have happened. A leak from the water, whatever pipes are in the road, 
and uh, it's it's usually not bad, but now it's gotten worse, and Saws has ignored it. This call was made, you know, two three days ago, and uh, it just got progressively worse, and we did not miss out on calling each and every day. We asked the San Antonio Water System about the reported leak. A saw spokesperson says a water main break caused a trench to collapse. It was scheduled for repair Sunday night. However, crews were busy with higher priority calls. Saw says it has 52 crews working 24 seven on water leaks and main breaks. It had 729 of those last month and August is expected to peak at 940 breaks and leaks. This morning, a man is facing a murder charge in a deadly shooting that happened yesterday. So this is video of 20 year old Jacarian Walker. He is accused in a deadly shooting that happened outside a northeast side gas station. San Antonio police say it happened around 1 p.m. yesterday afternoon in the 4600 block of FM 78. That's not far from Loop 410 and Ben's Engelman Road. Now, police say Walker was asking for money outside a gas station when he got into an altercation with 41 year old Stefan Vulcan. Moments later, they believe that Walker pulled out a gun and shot Vulcan multiple times. Vulcan was taken to the hospital where he later died. Now, police say Walker stayed at the scene and admitted to the shooting Vulcan, telling officers that the victim had said some racial slurs to him. Just as a murder trial of a man accused of shooting his brother-in-law got underway yesterday, the suspect unexpectedly confessed to the crime. Kiet Wynn's guilty plea happened right before attorneys were set to deliver opening statements in the trial. Wynn instead told the jury he shot and killed his brother-in-law, Ryan Vo, outside a Northside nail salon back in July of 2021. The state will pre present all evidence and witnesses to the jury in the punishment phase of the trial. They'll deliberate Wynn's sentence later this week. And coming up today on GMSA at 9, Erica Hernandez will join us live in studio to talk more about this particular case. Well, looking ahead, there'll be another town hall tonight for San Antonio residents to talk about that city budget for 2024. City staff will be at the Norm Oil Community Center on the southwest side off Culverson Avenue. The town hall starts at 6.30 this evening, and city council will vote on the budget by September 14th. Right now, 639, 82 degrees. And just ahead, we've all heard about how bad too much screen time is for your babies. So how much is too much? What experts are saying in just moments. Welcome back. It's not something most of us think about, but things like plumbing and electricity have come a long way over the last century. But if you have an older home, it may be time to add a few modern touches. Older homes have a lot of charm and character, but they also have decades of problems that need to be taken care of. And some older homes also have outdated plumbing. And while old plumbing systems aren't as dangerous as outdated wiring systems, they can still cause problems later. Depending on how old your home is, your electrical system might be outdated. It has to be rewired. So if you find yourself in that situation, it's time to consult an electrician. Many older homes may not have adequate insulation. Hiring someone to come in and give you an estimate on how to add insulation into your older home could really improve your energy bills. You should also consider replacing anything that's been damaged over the years, whether it's flooring, part of your exterior. But remember, if you're looking to keep that old world charm Arm, choose things that are going to fit into the style of that house. All right, on an entirely different note, it's something we've all heard. Too much screen time early on could cost your babies in terms of their development. And as ABC's Allison Kosick reports, a new study says that many parents should be rethinking their children's viewing habits. This morning, a new warning for parents. Researchers say too much screen time for babies at one year old is linked to developmental delays by the time they become toddlers. Increased screen time, whether that is from computers, tablets, video games, any type of screen at age one, is associated with some developmental delays, whether that is motor communication, social skills, speaking. Pediatrician Alok Patel says the study published Monday in the journal JAMA Pediatrics is significant because it looks at the impacts of screen exposure on babies, finding that anywhere from one to four hours of screen time could have long lasting effects. Kids at age one who have an excessive amount of screen time are lacking that face-to-face -face human interaction, which is how they learn about speech, intonation, listening skills, and essentially everything about the world at that age. Are there educational benefits though with screen time? You know, there is no distinction in this study between educational programming 
and programming design for pure entertainment. And the researchers do acknowledge that this is another area that needs to be explored to differentiate these two. Because while the American Academy of Pediatrics does say that under the age of two, they recommend no screen time, they do recognize that parents out there are going to rely on screens at some point in time. So how much screen time is okay? In a perfect world under the age of two, screen time would be kept at an absolute minimum. And then above the age of two, about two to five, we try to keep it to about an hour a day. Zoom is totally okay. If you're Zooming with grandma or grandpa, you're still practicing speech. Dr. Patel encourages parents to interact with your kids while watching hopefully high quality programming, but he also cautions not to use screens as an emotional crutch or as a quick fix way to soothe your children. Allison Kosick, ABC News, New York. 645. And big problems at I-35 at Wiedner Road. Let's check in with Stephen Cavazos. Unfortunately, it's not getting good out there. Better, I should say. 35 at Wiedner Road. This is what we're going to have to keep a very close eye on throughout the early morning hours. Big crash reported out here, and I want to take a look at that so you can see that river of traffic. A lot of those vehicles that you see out there are being diverted off of the main lanes onto the frontage road. Now, again, this is I-35 northbound, but if you're traveling southbound, please stay focused out on the roadway. This is already a very busy corridor, as you can see right behind me that backup out there is stretched past the loop 410 interchange so anyone that's heading north along i-35 you're going to have big troubles out there we did send a notification to your ksat mobile app and if you didn't receive it make sure your notifications are turned on we have a heavy first responder presence it's tough to say if paramedics are out there this early in the morning but we're hoping everyone is going to be okay out there and there are no injuries reported but uh, we'll have to just wait and see at this time earlier there were two life lanes that we saw that were blocked we're going to update that uh, to now looking like the main lanes are completely shut down there as traffic is moving through the frontage road at a very slow rate. Earlier, you saw that it was moving at just about maybe 12 miles per hour, but from that shot at Transguide, looks like things are at a standstill. Wide look at our map doesn't really show a whole lot of other problems out there, just the normal congestion, but the big issue will be here along 35 throughout the morning. I want to leave you with a different shot here as we see that crash scene. It back up actually stretches all the way to 35 past 35 North Loop 410. Our friends at Transguide are scoping through a lot of these different cameras to give us uh, the view of the conditions out there. But I can tell you that if you have to travel through I-35 in the next few minutes, think for uh, look for a different route, guys. Absolutely. Jeez. And Stephen, as you mentioned earlier, add any mm. amount of rain yeah. to the mix, it's going to be a mess out there. Oh, yeah. And the good thing is it's more toward, what, the southeast, but still. Yeah. And that's not going to be the situation this morning, though, with any rain. We're going to be it. dry for the rest of the morning commute. This afternoon, yeah, a uh, different situation. We'll have a little bit of rain out there. All right, here you can see the sun is trying to come up. It's going to actually rise just after 7 o'clock this morning, but we've got these clouds. Now, we've had morning low clouds in the past, but the, not really the same thing. These are actually part of a tropical storm Herald out there. And as you can see, the initial bands of rain have moved on in. Showers, thunderstorms. If you are heading down 37 in toward Corpus Christi, you are going to run into some of this rain and this will continue. It's continuing to push off to the west. And actually, a couple of showers are almost heading in toward Laredo right now. The center of circulation, though, is still out here in the Gulf of Mexico, and that was working its way in a west northwestwardly path about 18, 20 miles per hour. So it's moving at a fairly decent clip right now. It's going to make land late this morning, early afternoon. So here's the uh, computer models and pretty much everything's in agreement. Well, obviously the heaviest rain is going to be down here to the south and in and around town. We will start to see some of these uh, showers in the metropolitan area, obviously further on down to the south. And this is going to be by late morning into the afternoon hours. Even a couple of thunderstorms are going to be possible. But again, further north you go, the less lesser amount of rain and then everything continues to work its way off to the west. And so by dinner time and then early at evening, it's all going to really start to taper off and the heaviest rain is going to continue to work its way into the uh, northern Mexico and we'll just have a couple of leftover showers then in behind that. As far as who sees rain, again, the heaviest rain, most rain down to the south, least rain up to the north and for nobody, this is going to be a drop breaker. Now, two to four inches of rain down to the south and maybe some heavier downpours locally on top of that. There could actually be a little bit of flooding in spots, but around San Antonio, parts of the hill country, quarter of an inch rain. Not looking to give horse in the mouth by any means. I mean, we'll take anything we can get. 
but again, it is not going to be a lot the further north you go. Also, there is the severe threat, and this is for a, an isolated, weak little tornado to form up. A lot of times, as these tropical systems come on shore and they're spinning around there in the outer bands, they can have those little tornadoes to spin up. So that'll just be not very likely at all, but just something we have to watch out for as the uh, the day rolls on. Jumping ahead into the weekend, we still have a couple of showers left over around the area or still one or two of them the chance here, even going into Sunday, maybe as well as Monday. And that despite the fact that we are going to get back up into triple digits starting tomorrow. So we have a nice break today. 94 high temperature. Actually, a little bit below normal, 11 below yesterday's high. So this is going to be just a godsend with those mid 90s. But back to the triple digits and then uh, the way the whole patterns kind of set up. Yes, it will be hot this weekend, but at least there's that chance for some rain again. 60% chance for rain and the majority down in the south and a little weak tornado or two is possible. Not very likely. Very good. And at least cloud cover if, if no rain. Right. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Mike. Time now, 650, 82 degrees. Let's look out there with live cam. Yes, we're waiting for that rain, but for now, well, it's looking pretty out there. Sun's trying to come up, 82 degrees for now. We'll be right back. We are officially just days away from the second annual KSAP Pigskin Classic. Antonian, Holy Cross, Southside, Somerset, Jefferson, Uvalde, O'Connor and Brandeis all taking part in the two day event. It begins this Friday night, August 25th, and then the big triple header all day Saturday, August 26th. And you still have time to get your tickets for the KSET Pigskin Classic. They're on sale and you can find a link on our website at KSET.com. So all of these games are taking place at the Alamo Dome. And if you're not a KSET insider, make sure to sign up so you can get the best seats in the house along with other perks. So just look for the story on our website. Well, if we ever have trouble on 35, it can have a big ripple effect. Yes, let's check back with Stephen Cavazos about that situation at I-35 at Weedner right. Road. Yeah, it looks like they've reopened at least a few lanes there. Let's get a wider look. We're just going to uh, take it with this shot here at Transguide. Again, a major crash was reported through the northbound lanes of I-35, and you can see traffic is still backed up out there. Now, earlier we saw traffic was being diverted to the frontage road, but since then at least one or two lanes has reopened, which will hopefully let a little bit more of the commute move through there smoothly, but still no word yet on any injuries. It's hard to make out how many vehicles are involved, but we're going to have to keep a very close eye on this throughout the morning. Again, this is I-35 northbound near Weedner Road. Traffic backed up past the Loop 410 interchange, so plan your commute ahead of time. Mike, the good news is these roads will be dry throughout the morning. And we got clouds out there, which is going to help to keep temperatures down. The rain uh, from Tropical Storm Herald obviously is moving in Corpus Christi and even uh, some of those lighter showers approaching Laredo right now that will continue to work its way on shore later on today. 45 mile per hour winds and it continues its west northwestward progress stays basically down to the south. So that's where the majority of the rain is going to be. Also wind advisories in our southwestern counties today. High fire danger up to the north because not going to see as much rain up there to the north. The heaviest will be down to the south. 94 for a high temperature today. That's it. That's it. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, Mike, and thanks for joining us today. Don't forget the hurricane tracker from KSAT 12. Look on the App Store.